Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how I used this Honey Bee Stamps SWAC stamp set, or I should say single stamp, some alcohol inks, some alcohol lift ink, the Lawn Fawn stitched mug frames, and Smitty's ABCs to create a cute shaker card. I start by taking the lip stamp and stamping it using the alcohol lift ink onto the Upo paper that has my different color red alcohol inks on it and I am taking it and stamping it directly onto some shrink plastic. I was super excited about this because I do not have any red stays on ink and I was really hoping for a way that I could stamp solid stamps in a color other than black because black is the only stays on ink color I have. And I tried this and it worked pretty well. So there will be more cards in the future where I use this technique. I will say I did try with the pink. Um, I don't remember the color exactly, but it was a sort of purpley tinted pink alcohol ink and the lips were too light and they didn't actually show up. So you will have to pick and choose your colors. Make sure they're a little bit darker. I've only tried a couple of the reds and the pink and the reds work just fine. Anyway, after I have stamped them and cut them out, I am going to heat them using my heat tool. You have the option of using the oven, I just get lazy. All my stuff's at my desk, I can just heat it up right there. I'm heating it over a silicone baking mat, and a lot of times I do put a pot holder underneath where I'm heating stuff up at, but this time I didn't, which is why I'm lifting up the corner of my silicone baking mat. Sometimes as you're heating the plastic, it does not flatten out on its own. And in that case, just use something flat to push on it and it'll flatten back out. That's why I was using my alcohol lift ink container. Off camera, I did stamp more than just the three that you see me cut out there. Um, I only ended up using four for this card, so I have more for a future card. Anyway, I am now making my own patterned paper. I'm going to do diagonal stripes in abandoned coral candied apple and white. I have stencils that are diagonal stripes, but none of them are this wide, and I wanted wider stripes. So I'm just using washi tape that I have stuck on my shirt a couple times to help remove some of the tackiness, and I am laying it diagonally across my paper to try to create little sections I can ink up one at a time. To measure, I kind of went halfway between the first stripe to map off the white spot and I just continue this all the way through the panel. Hopefully my explanation made some amount of sense. If not, just watch the video and you'll see mostly what I'm doing. I will say my stripes are not perfectly even and that's fine. They're not measured out or anything. I just eyeballed it the whole time. Using the Lawn Fawn stitched mug frame dies, I cut out from black cardstock three spoons and ten mugs. I am going to glue and stack nine of the mug frames and three spoons together. 
The reason I am stacking so many mug frames together is because I want some room for my shaker bits to move around. Now you could try foam tape with this or you could even do craft foam that has double-sided adhesive on it. And those would both work just fine. I wanted a very clean solid look so I opted for multiple layers of the cardstock instead. And the reason for my three spoons being stacked up is because I wanted to give it a little bit more dimension and make it look more spoon-like, which you'll see later. Once all my frames are together, I do lay something heavy over them just to make sure that everything adheres well. So here I have my acetate sheet and it actually comes with a little piece of paper behind each sheet. So I use that to trace out the outline of the mug. I need to cut the plastic a little bit smaller than the mug so that it's not poking out of the frame. I pull out my gold watercolor palette and right here I mess up. I actually spritz the white gold or silver whatever color you want to call that and I start to put it on the handle. I did not mean to. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't because I knew from the start I wanted the yellow gold color. Anyway, I wipe it off and I am painting the cup handle, just the cup handle with the gold and I'm going to do the same thing with the spoon. Now, this black cardstock is just regular cardstock. It's not watercolor paper, it's not thick paper, it's not really meant to handle a lot of moisture. So I try to keep it pretty limited with the amount of water that's in there. Next, I decide I want to make my panel just a little bit smaller. So it was originally four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, which is a standard A2 size card panel. But I wanted it smaller than that because I wanted to mat it on black cardstock. So I took one of the infinity rectangle dies from Hero Arts and I just made that panel just a little bit smaller. Here I'm going over the back of the spoon and the sides of the spoon a little bit with the gold paint. Letting it dry now and I'm going to work on my sentiment. For my sentiment I wanted to put sending a cup of love. I do not have a sentiment that worked well for this. I do have a sentiment that says scenting a cup of love, but it wasn't the right size in the right position, any of that. So I use my Lawn Fawn Smitty's ABCs to create my sentiment. To try to line them up, I'm actually using a scrap piece of lined paper. And I even test it out and make sure that it looks right as I'm not wanting to mess up my entire card panel because while it's not super involved, it did take a little while to create that panel. So here I'm just trying to line up my paper underneath my stamped image, or sentiment I should say, and I ended up moving the word of. I moved it over a little bit more to make room for the word love. I am using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm using it because it is a little bit crisper and darker than some of my other inks, and I am stamping. stamping. Ugh, I cannot talk today. Whew. I am stamping my sentiment on my card panel. Once I've done this, I do want to keep the card panel to the side for a little bit because that ink will smudge. So you have to be careful. Give it a little bit of dry time before you touch it. While things are drying, I glue the acetate window onto the top frame, which is the one that has the golden handle. Through this whole card process, and pretty much every card I ever make, when I'm not really sure of how it's going to look, I lay things out just to test, and you'll see me do that a lot. So, 
this right here is just me seeing if I like how it's turning out. So I can change anything now instead of way later after I've already committed so much of my time and energy into the card. I am cutting down this black panel to uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, which is the standard A2 size. Remember, I cut down the diagonal stripe panel just a little bit, so this black will frame it. My original intention was to keep the card A2 size, but you'll see later, I changed my mind on that too. For my spoon, to give it even more dimension, I am taking this fat paintbrush handle and I am kind of moving it around over the mouth part of the spoon while I cup the spoon in my hand. This will give it a curved shape. As you can see from the side, it actually starts to look more and more like a spoon. For the spoon, I did notice that there were a few spots that were a little bit dark, like the black cardstock was poking through a little bit more than I wanted. So I go back over the spoon and even the cup handle one more time with the gold acrylic paint. Not acrylic, it's watercolor. Okay, you guys, I guess I need a nap now. Here, I'm just adding extra little hearts in gold and another red color. These are sequins or glitter confetti, one of those things. <laughs> For the word love in my sentiment, I am going to die cut it from this ink blended cardstock. I am using Candied Apple Distress Oxide ink to cut out the word. The shadow for that die set will be cut out of the black cardstock. Here I'm pulling out some more of the little gold hearts. I used some of these inside of the little cup shaker. I'm going to sprinkle these on the background. Now, I always place them up there and see what it's going to look like. And then I take things off and I glue things down and some things get switched around. So this isn't the way it's going to look at the very end. But it was a process I go through. Anyway, I decided at some point that I liked the gold. I needed to add more of it to the card. So I contemplated trying to add a gold border around the diagonal stripe panel, but I didn't really like that. So I decided to go with the gold to matte the black. This puts my card at four and a half inches by three and three quarters of an inch. So this is no longer a standard A2 size card. So I do have to make my own card base. And now that I'm pretty certain of all of the elements of my card, I am going to glue things together and in place. For most of this card, I use liquid glue. The exception is when I glue this black panel to the gold cardstock, I was worried that the liquid glue just wasn't going to seep in enough to hold it. So I am using score tape here. I'm not only going to use score tape though because I have a bad track record with trying to place things if it just has score tape. So I do apply a little bit of liquid glue over the score tape so that it doesn't immediately stick down the moment I touch the black paper to the gold paper. When I glue the cup down, I felt like it was probably best if I glued the frames down first and then glue in the little background piece. I could have tried it the other way, but I felt like I was going to get the position all wrong. Anyway, after I have it glued down, I am using my anti-static powder bag to make sure that my little elements aren't getting stuck along the sides of the frame. I'm then placing my little shaker bits inside the frame and gluing it all together. Now after you glue it in place, this is the part where you have to resist temptation and not to shake the card before the glue has completely dried. Because if you do this, 
there's a high probability that your shaker bits are going to get stuck in the glue and then your card's not going to be so much of a shaker anymore. Yeah, I've done that too many times. <laughs> anyway, for my spoon, I am attaching it with both liquid glue and foam tape. I stacked the foam tape in three layers on the handle because I wanted it to be even with the rest of the spoon. The foam tape that I used was 3M. At this point I decided my spoon needed a little something in it, so I added some glue dots or drops of glue. They're not glue dots, those are a different thing. <laughs> and then I placed some clay hearts on it. After I finished that, I decided it still needed a little something, so I took some of the other shaker bits and added them to the spoon as well. It was here I realized the right side of my card looked a little bare, so I decided to add a pair of the lips and a few of the other shaker elements onto the bottom of my card. This kind of makes it look like maybe some got spilled out of the cup or maybe fell off the spoon. To tie everything together, I am scattering some of the gold hearts and the polymer clay hearts across my card panel. To glue my card panel onto my card base, I am going to use the help of my stamp positioner tool. I am putting my card base right in the corner of my stamp positioner to help me line up my card panel and my card base more easily. I just attach these two with liquid glue. And now my card is done, and my stuff is finally dry enough I could shake it. <laughs> it's satisfying. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and today's card. I will be back again with more videos soon. Thank you all so much for watching.